Hey guys, welcome back to another After Effects tutorial here. We're going to be diving into the classic Thanos snap effect from the Avengers series. And you know, there's many, many different ways you can do this in After Effects or other programs or whatever. But I'm going to go over a pretty simple way and kind of the universal way people have been doing this in After Effects here. And I'm going to be using footage of uh, good old Brandon here uh, disappearing from the baseball field. If you've watched the... Uh, the recent CK Productions video, EA Sports Logic in Real Life, you'll understand where this shot is from. And just like in the uh, Infinity Wasp series as well, this is the same effect that I used for all those shots, uh, spoilers I guess, for the end of the, the Infinity Wasp series during the last episode. And at this point, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Brian. I host this filmmaking channel here where we go over VFX breakdowns, gear reviews, filmmaking topics, all that fun stuff. And I also co-own the channel CK Productions where we do a lot of short films related to video game logic and comedy skits, all that kind of fun stuff. So let's get started and dive in here. So if you want to follow along, you can always use your own footage that you're doing for whatever scene or effect that you're doing. What you're going to want to make sure you have is just you have a, a shot of your character who is going to be going away in the dust and you're going to also want to have a blank plate where they leave the shot and aren't there for a good you know 10 seconds or so so i'm going to layer this blank plate i'm actually just going to you know freeze frame it just for the sake of being able to have as much time as we can with it put it on the bottom here we're going to worry about that one layer later first step here what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a mask around brandon here Good old Brandon. And for that mask, I'm just gonna make it, I don't have, it doesn't have to be like the most accurate mask in the entire world, but I'm just gonna make kind of a simple mask around him. And we're gonna make sure this mask doesn't, doesn't ever, you know, intersect with his edges or whatnot. He's always in the mask. And one thing we wanna notice here is, you see maybe the, uh, <laughs> The blank plate wasn't exactly as perfect as we thought, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just adjust it a little bit there. I'm gonna do a little feathering to blend it in, and there you go. You would have never even known I masked that. I mean, you guys all know, but now you don't know. All right, so next step, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pre-comp this layer of Brandon. So it's got its own composition here. He's just this isolated clip here on top of this background clip. And this is where the basis of our effect comes from. We're gonna duplicate this guy. And just for the sake of making things uh, separated, we're going to go ahead and call this dust comp. What we're gonna do in dust comp is we're gonna solo that layer. And what we're gonna do is we're going to make another mask around here. So this is a mask that's independent from this mask. Now that we did the, uh, we did the pre-composing, we're gonna make this mask a little bit jagged, make some jagged ed edges to it. This is going to be our mask that kind of wipes through Brandon's body here. And you'll see it's going to be used for uh, our particular layer that we put on. So something kind of like that, uh oh, everything's gone. For the sake of uh, just animating this, let's put this on none, so it's not actually cropping anything yet. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the spot where we want him to start disappearing. I'm gonna do it right here after we size. Um, put it right here, grab the mask, go forward, and push it all the way to the other side. So now that we see, just goes through there and if we put this on to add we can see how it actually goes a little too fast we're gonna make it a little slower all right so you want something you know nice and slow there and it doesn't have to be you know perfect or anything we're actually we're not gonna actually really see this math this is just for the purposes of particular and so what we'll do here is we're actually gonna make another pre-comp of this so now that this comp here is literally just this kind of window here that we see Brandon. And then we're gonna, um, we're gonna go and hide that comp. We're not, gonna see, we're not gonna see that again. We're gonna hide it. And I'm gonna go and add in particular. Oh, by the way, you need particular for this. Um, there's definitely other ways you can do it, you know, with other particle 
effects in uh, in After Effects, but Particular is the best way to go, and there's a lot of easy ways to get Particular, especially if you're a student, you can uh, sign up for a free trial uh, and get Particular and all the great Red Giant stuff for sure. And you know, there's other ways to get it as well. You know those ways. For Particular here, I'm gonna change this to an emitter that emits based off of the layer. Before I go ahead and pick the layer, I'm gonna make sure this uh, this layer is 3D because it, for some reason it has to be 3D or particular will yell at you if you don't make it 3D. So, then we're gonna go ahead. We have this change to layer. We're gonna have to just go and find, where is it? Okay, right here, layer emitter. Go ahead and change that to our dust comp. And for some reason, I don't know if there's a problem with everyone's uh, latest version of After Effects, but for some reason, the uh, when I do this effect, it doesn't actually show unless I put my quality up to full. So, okay, so to see a little better, we can uh, make this in isolated mode, and we can see there's they're really, um, with the particle count so low, there really isn't many particles coming off of here. So let's uh, push it up pretty high, like really far. All right, we can kind of see the uh, the particles starting to emit here, and they emit as the uh, as that mass that we made before kind of goes over time. So that's why we kind of made that mass there. So there's a couple things that we want to do. We can go ahead and uh, unisolate this here and have everything showing. We can see uh, the particles uh, starting to form and come off of here, but um, there's a couple other steps we need to do here. So first of all. We're gonna to wanna to visit this layer one more time. And we're gonna to wanna to add linear wipe to that. We're going to uh, make sure the angle is at the right angle for your shot, just uh, to kind of go in the same way as that mask we did before that's going across. So start there, make a keyframe for the transition. Go ahead and move forward and push that forward till your subject is wiped off. And this is gonna coincide with the actual uh, particle effects as well. So it's gonna make, like, make it look like the particle effects are pulling your character off the screen basically. And it's gonna be important also to feather this a good bit as well, cause you don't want that, you don't really want that straight line there. Next, we're gonna wanna see if that kind of uh, lines up pretty well with uh, with our particular effect. Okay, so a couple things here. We're probably, uh, the wipe itself looks like it's a little too quick and it's happening a little too late. So let's push that back a little bit. Maybe make the feathering a little less intense. It's gonna be a little bit of a trial and error period um, when you're working with this. And I think it might be even better to throw even more particles on here. You're gonna want a lot of particles flying off of your character. So we're pretty much all timed up here with the particular layer. So a couple things I think we're gonna wanna do is I think we're gonna want to even more increase the particles here, make it a whole bunch of particles, like like, oh, like 100, over 100,000 particles in here. And then a couple other things what we can do is we can make the velocity a little higher so these particles are flying off a little bit more instead of just kind of floating there and going wherever. And one other thing we're gonna to wanna to think about is which direction we want the particles to go. So what we can do here is we can go into the environment and kind of change the gravity a little bit, kind of pull it down so the particles go up a little bit more and push the wind over in the direction that we want them. So this doing it this way is gonna make them go in this direction, which is what kind of what I'm going for. Um, so let's see how this looks. Yeah, so see now the particles are moving a little bit faster and they're and they're going off into uh, into the sky there away from where Brandon was. And this is kind of the basis of where this effect comes from. And there's just kind of little tweaks here and there that you would do to make this the way that you want it to look. So a couple things that I would suggest doing is you know, going into your particle size, maybe some of these could be even a little bit bigger and we can make size random. So there's kind of a varying, you know, different, we vary the size of these little particles here so that's not all uniform. It makes them look a little bit different. We can even change 
the velocity random a little bit. So some of the particles will be flying off a little faster, some of them will be flying off a little slower. Any of those kind of little details you add in helps kind of sell the realism a bit more because, you know, it's typically not all these particles would be moving in a uniform formation uh, and then they would look kind of weird in the end. So it's, it's good to just fiddle with these things and get it to exactly where you think you want it to be. Honestly, we could even use more particles. Cool. And yeah, that looks a little bit better. There's, you know, more varying degrees of velocity and size that we have in here. Um, another good thing to do for something like this is to add motion blur to it as well. You can do that by kind of going into the motion blur option there and hit that. But uh, something people don't really know about all the time is you can actually go into the rendering settings here um, in particular and sort of actually specifically target the motion blur here of how much motion blur you want to add and how little. And I think we want to add a decent amount here. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on here and see what that does. I think it uh, kind of affected a little too much. They kind of look like bugs flying off of them now. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the shutter angle down a bit. When you bring the shutter angle down, a bit on this motion blur. That's kind of the uh, the equivalent of bringing the shutter speed up if you're working with like a traditional camera or something. It's gonna make a, it's gonna add less motion blur to it. I think it just needs a little bit of motion blur. I don't think it needs quite this much of motion blur. That's a, that's a bit too much. And what you typically wanna do is you might wanna have it match um, what the motion blur was in the scene that you were doing. Yeah, and that's the basis of where this effect comes from. Um, if you're doing it through After Effects here, there's a few ways, um, there's a few different directions you can go from from here. Um, I know that some people like to go and they like to, they have the character kind of change a certain color, you know, over the time, maybe more of like a desaturated color over time of the effect. So they're kind of withering away. And then sometimes even put that effect here on the, uh, the layer where the if where the particles are pulling off of so that's definitely an option that you can do another thing i like to do is i like to throw in uh, a dust element and put it on top of the effect so we'll go ahead and uh, i'm gonna just gonna flip this around here have it more kind of uh, fade on instead of instead of kind of blast itself on there make it a little bit more subtle and it reduce the opacity a bit so it's not quite as crazy as this crazy dust cloud or whatever yeah and so that's basically the basis of what this effect here is and from here you can basically take this and go whatever direction you want to go in, you know, you, maybe you want to add some turbulent displacement to the character here. Maybe you want to add a glow or some other effects that are coming off of him. Maybe you want to add some, you know, textured cracks when he's going through here. There's all different possibilities you can go for it. For this shot, for the uh, EA Sports Logic, I just ended up doing more of a simple disintegration effect here. It didn't go too crazy. There's definitely going to be a couple more in the future. Um, for some future videos where I'm going to be taking this effect and, and going kind of an extra mile with it as well. And I encourage you to go the extra mile with it as well and, and kind of make it how you want to make it. So that's about it for this tutorial. If you guys like this video, go ahead and like and subscribe down below. I'll be posting more of these VFX breakdowns and After Effects tutorials going forward and doing more gear reviews, filmmaking topics and tutorials and all that fun stuff as always. And when you have time, be sure to check out CK Productions as well. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a nice week and I'll see you guys for the next video. Bye everyone.